Take one man with a dream of the past. Let him face the future on the sheer cliffs of a towering mountain. That's our story, Ascent, taken from the files of John Steele, adventurer. friends. This is John Steele. We're back this week to bring you another story of action and excitement. And this is one of my favorites. Some of my guests I've known quite well, and others only slightly. But this week's guest I know very well. Larry and I have been friends ever since he was an awkward kid. I've watched him grow into young manhood. Believe me, I'm mighty proud of him. Uh, suppose you take over from here, Larry, before I tell the whole story. Folks, this is Larry Marshall. I guess mountain climbing fever runs in families. That's the only explanation I could find, because believe me, nobody was more surprised than I was. You see, my dad was killed in 1938, just before the war. He and four friends set out to climb the Dernelberg, one of the lesser peaks of the Swiss Alps, and, well, they just disappeared. I was a kid away in prep school at the time, so I got all of my information secondhand from my mother. It seems they sent out search parties, but they never found them. I wanted to go home, but Mother said it wasn't necessary. I remember lying in my bunk up at school late at night crying, swearing that someday I'd climb that mountain and find out what happened to my dad. Then the war came along and postponed my plans. But after the war, I took my discharge in Europe, wrote the families of all of Dad's original party, asking them to help finance the expedition. And this was the surprise. They all wanted to come along. So I went ahead to Oberhofen, the little town at the base of the mountain, and settled down in a cozy inn to wait for the others. Within a month, they were all there, including John Steele, who'd come over at Mother's suggestion. It's good to see you again, Larry. Oh, it's good to see you too, John. John, why did Mother ask you to come? Well, you know how mothers are. Still doesn't trust me to take care of myself. I wouldn't say that. It's hard for your mother to realize. John, I've been sure. through a war. I know. I'd resent it under any other circumstances. You mean because I was your dad's closest friend? Yeah, I guess so. Well, that's the only reason I came. Well, I'm glad you did. I was supposed to go on that trip with your dad. Oh, I never knew that before. Yes, everything was all arranged. It's funny you never told me. Canceled my plans at the last minute. Why? I don't know. John, does it strike you as strange that all these people wanted to come along? Oh, I don't know. It's been ten years. Why should they want to? You did. Well, I had a reason. Maybe they have theirs. What do you mean? Just conjecture. You're not worried taking a group of amateurs up to Dornelberg, are you? Oh, well, they've all had some experience. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Besides, with you along, we're both seasoned climbers. Yeah. Well, come on. You may as well meet them now. Okay. They're certainly a strange collection. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Well, folks, here's the fellow we've been waiting for. Uh, John, uh, John, this is Michael Murphy, John Steele. Hello, Mr. Murphy. Call me Mike, John. Everyone else does. Oh, <laughs> Mike it is. Mike's brother was on the trip with Dad. Yeah, I remember. I uh, remember. John, this is Jerry Livingston. Hello, Jerry. How do you do, Mr. Steele? Well, since we're being informal, why don't you just call me John? Well, I... I'd rather not. Whatever you say. Jerry's in the same spot I'm in. He lost his dad on the trip, too. Yes. And this is George Weishart. Hello, Steele. Doing a little celebrating, eh, George? Nothing wrong with celebrating... No, good... of course not. It's just that if I'm going to guide this party, then I'm responsible for your safety. I've been up a lot tougher mountains than Dornelberg. This time of year, any mountain's tough. Well, don't worry about it. Dornelberg may have killed my brother, but it won't beat me. Oh, I'm sure George will be in shape by morning. Oh, sure. Uh, this is Virginia Hamilton, John. How do you do, John? Hello, Virginia. Isn't it just too exciting for words? I suppose you might say that. I mean, the anticipation and everything after all these years. Yes, of course. I know just how Mother felt the night before they left. Perhaps. <laughs> Dear Dad, he's such an old stay-at-home, but Mother used to enjoy this sort of thing. Yes, uh, if you'll excuse it's me... It's sort uh... of elemental. Uh, of course. Now, I uh... feel almost... Uh, yes, Virginia. We have eight days of hard work ahead of us, folks. Is there anyone who feels he can't make it? Oh, no. No, of course like not. Okay. Larry has gotten all our equipment ready. 
Now, I've arranged for us to be awakened at four. In the morning? Yes, Virginia. We have to be on our way by five. But that's so early. Well, good night, folks. See you all in the morning. Yeah, good night, Mr. Steele. Time to turn in, Larry. Yeah. I think I'll get just a breath of air before I hit the sand. Good idea. Go on on the terrace. Okay. Weather chart looks good. You never tell in October. No. Air feels clean. Uh Uh-huh. It's a beautiful mountain. Yes, it is. Doesn't seem possible. What? After all these years, I'm here. I was hoping you'd forget about this during the war. Well, I almost did. Can't wait any longer. What do you expect to find up on that mountain, Larry? I don't know. I don't know. Are you sure you want to make this trip? Yes, John. Very sure. The next morning, we made our way up through the groves and gentle slopes of the wasteland, everyone pretty much setting their own pace, and by late afternoon, we were approaching the guide's hut. I noticed that Weishart had lagged behind a couple of hundred yards, so I dropped back to see if he was all right. Everything okay? Just taking my time. Uh, There's no hurry. Almost there now. Yeah, I know. You know? I mean, it's uh, after five. I assume we're getting close. Oh. George, what was your brother like? Hmm? I said... I heard you. Well? If you don't mind. Well, of course. I had no idea. After ten years, you wouldn't want it. To... <laughs> Did I say something funny? <laughs> Very. Well, I guess... Uh, there was no love wasted between me and Tom. Oh. I hated him. Well, then why... Why what? Why do you want to go up the mountain? You know, you ask too many questions, kid. Maybe I do. You mind your business, I'll mind mine. That's okay with me. Well, it's just over this slope. Good. Yeah, there there it is. The others are already there. Meaning? Nothing, nothing, George. Oh, John, where's Virginia? I'm by the brook, pulling her feet. Well, I think I'll take some of the sand. Just call when supper's ready. Okay. Oh, hi. This brook's just too delicious for work. You're tired? Oh, the back of my legs simply throb. Come on, take off your shoes and give it a try. Well, all right. You've talked me into it. Ah. Isn't that simply wonderful? That feels good. Is that all you can say? That yeah, feels fine. It's not much better. Oh, it's been a simply thrilling day. Has it? Of course. Yeah, I guess it has been a good day. You guess? No, I hadn't really noticed. Oh, you see, I take this trip pretty seriously. Why on earth? It's something I've been promising myself that I'd do ever since my dad was lost. That's silly. Silly? Maybe. Why did you come along? Just for fun. Sounded like a good idea. Besides, I was bored with New York. I see. Well, there's really nothing to be so intense about. No? You don't honestly think we're going to find anything up there, do you? I don't know what I think. Well, that isn't the silly... What was your mother like, Virginia? Mother? Oh, I don't know. I can barely remember her. You weren't that young. I just never knew her very well. See, she and Dad were separated when I was a youngster. Oh. I never saw her very much after that. As a child, I remember that she cried a good deal. She and Dad were always fighting over something. I see. The only thing that I know she loved was being outdoors. Of course, Dad couldn't stand that. No. Come and get it, kids! We're coming! Such a dear. Huh? Huh? Oh, really, Larry? Don't be a dolt. Come on, I'm simply starving. By mid-morning of the next day, we had reached the foot of the glacier lying between two huge ridges that swept up the Darnelberg. When we got up on the smooth ice of the glacier, John insisted that we rope up as a precaution. So we split up into two teams, Steele, Virginia, and Weishart on one rope, Jerry, Murphy, and myself on the other. John led the way, sounding with his ice axe before each step and watching for the discolorations that were sure signs of the voids under them. A sense of uneasiness was growing inside me. I wanted to know more about these people I was climbing this mountain with. Can't be rested this, John. I'm simply exhausted. Okay, Virginia. Can't waste time if we're going to make the first terrace by dark. Five minutes more won't make that much difference. 
Well, how you doing, Jerry? I'm okay. Well, just sit where you are. Yeah. You okay, Mike? Strap on my rucksack's been loosening up for the last hour. Oh, well, her, I'll help you. Yeah. Really beautiful up here, isn't it? Yeah. So clear. Uh -huh. There, try that. Yeah. Oh, that's much better. Huh. Cigarette? Oh, thanks. Lips are about to split. We'll use more windburn cream. Must have a gallon of the stuff on now. <laughs> what causes those ice towers? Uh, oh, buckling pressure where the glacier meets the mountain. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, to look at, you mean. Yeah, what do you think? Well, of... if one of them falls over and starts down the glacier, uh, well, you don't want to be in the way. Yeah, I see what you mean. Pretty risky, huh? Well, nothing about mountain climbing that's easy. Makes me wonder. Oh, well, what? What we're all doing here. Why did you come? Really Mary's idea. Who's Mary? Pat's wife. He was my brother. Oh. See, I was always crazy about Mary, and when Pat was lost, well, I waited the proper time, then I asked her to marry me. She said no. Because while Pat was legally dead, she still felt married in the eyes of the church. Kind of a funny attitude, because after all, they never did get along. Oh, I see. Whose fault was that? Who can say? Pat was a nice guy. Mary's a little hard to live with. I think I could get along with her. Uh-huh. Anyway, she said if I came on this trip and found any real evidence that they were all killed, then she'd marry me. The search parties never found them. I know. Well, then why? The only unusual angle of the whole deal was the fact that just before he left, Pat took $50,000 out of the bank in cash. That's a lot of dough. Yeah, for a trip to Europe. Yeah. Okay, folks, on your feet. Uh, okay, John. Uh, listen, Mike, I want to talk to Jerry. Don't get too close to us, huh? Yeah, yeah, sure. That's just between you and me, Larry. Right, right. Huh. You rested, Jerry? Oh, much better. You've been kind of quiet all day. Well, I, I, I've been thinking. No, I know what you mean. They came up this glacier ten years ago. Maybe over the same route. Maybe. It's the closest I've been to Dad for, for a long time. What do you mean? Oh, I don't know. I kind of feel him all around me. Must have been quite a guy. Oh, the best. I thought the world of him. Yeah, I understand. No, you don't. No one ever loved his father the way I loved mine. Well, take it easy, fella. Sorry. It's just it's been so long. Yeah. Nobody understood him like I did. He was such an idealist. Nothing ever worked out for him. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea you're coming along on this trip. Oh, no, no, no. My, my uh, psychiatrist said it was the best thing in the world for me. Why? Well, he says it's not knowing that that's made me so nervous. Oh, I see. He says maybe if, I, if we can find proof that they were killed, maybe I can be myself again. Well, maybe he's right. Yeah. It... What's that? I don't know. Keep your eyes open. What is it, Steel? Ice buckling. Look at that tower shaking. It's going to fall. Watch it. Oh, no. Sliding down the glacier. Headed this way. Get over. All right, come on, Jerry. No. Come on. Maybe that's how dead. I just... oh, I'm sorry, fella. Mike, help me drag him. Yeah, I'm coming. Hang on to him. All right, grab his legs. Right. Here we go. Uh. Okay, Mike? Yeah, yeah, okay. Jerry, Jerry, come on, kid. Come on, open your eyes. <laughs> we made it over the ice fall and up to the first terrace by dark. The next morning, Virginia's ankle was so swollen that John decided to leave her with the tent and enough supplies while the rest of us pushed on. It had turned cold during the night, and we all pulled on extra sweaters and mittens before we started climbing. We worked our way up the gentle slope of the terrace till mid-morning when the ledge became noticeably narrower. What do you think, John? Terrace is good for another couple hundred of yards. I haven't seen anything that looked scalable. I've been watching, too. You've got to find something soon. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe we should have started around the other way. Never lose altitude if you can help it. Cardinal rule of mountain climbing, Jerry. Uh -huh. Really cuts in here. Yeah. 
John, hold it. Huh? How about right here? Pretty steep. A little at first. If we can get up the first 30 feet, looks like the cliff face falls off after that. The corner isn't bad. You get a leg on each side. It might go. I, I'm i willing. All right, what do you say, George? It's okay by me. It's the best we've seen. Well, let's go, then. Right. Rope up, everyone. Okay. Right. Yeah. I'll lead. Then George, Jerry, Mike, yeah. Larry, you bring up the rear. Yeah. Okay. Tie those knots tight. I'll leave about 40 feet between you and George, Jerry. Yeah. Here goes. Now don't start till he signals you, George. I know. John, there's a handhold about six inches to your right. Got it. How is it? Not too bad. He'll probably stop when he gets to that ledge. Then you go, George. I've been up a mountain before. Yeah, yeah, sorry. A little to your left, John. Right. Okay. Come ahead. Go on, George. Okay, I'm going. And that's the way it went. First George, then Jerry, then Mike, and it was my turn. And that's the way you climb a mountain. Not in big steps, but an inch at a time. You grip with your hands, with your toes, your knees, your chest, and you crawl up it like a fly up a wall. And most of the time, it's lonely. The only company you've got is the thin lifeline of the rope twisting and turning over the rocks above you. Showers of stone beat down on your head and your shoulders, and you pull yourself up another inch, another foot, until you reach a ledge where the others have rested. But by that time, they've gone on. And then way above, you hear the leader hammering in steel pythons as he reaches the tough part of the climb. And later, you reach the python yourself, and you feel the steel spike in your hand, and new energy flows through your muscles because you know others have been there before you. And we've been climbing for about two hours, and we're halfway up the cliff when I inched up to a ledge and found Mike resting. Okay, another foot, and I can pull you over the ledge, Larry. Okay. A little to your right. Yeah. That's it. Okay, now. Ah. ah, thanks. Well, what's holding us up? Uh, cliff bulges out right above us. Oh? Took John a little while to work around it, get on top. Yeah. George and Jerry make it okay? Yeah, yeah. Once we get on top, we'll be all right. You ready for Mike, John? Okay, send him up. Okay, get going, fella. Yeah. What's the matter? Nothing. Feel all right? Just a little tired, I guess. You want to rest? No, no, I'm Okay. Well, work your way straight out on the ledge about 10 feet and then start up. Right. Right. And that's it. Yeah. Another couple of feet. Okay, now up. That's it. There's a toe hole to your right up about a foot. Don't look down, Mike. Now, now, there you got it. Good. Now, can you reach that python? Don't think so. Well, look, shift your weight to your left foot. Good. Now, stand on your toes and lean for it. Can't make it. Don't look down. I'm slipping. Hang on. I'm gonna fall. Grab the rope, kick away from the cliff. Help! What happened? Mike fell. Is he hurt? I don't know. Hit his head. Mike. Mike, you hurt? Help me. All right, hang on. John, we lay him up. He's hanging right below me. Right. We'll get you, Mike. Just hang on. That's it. Keep him coming. More. More. Another 20 feet. Hang on, Mike. Ten feet now. Keep him coming. That's it. Five now. All right, hold it, John. I can reach him. Don't reach for him. Pull him in. Right. All right, slack off. Hold it now. Okay, John, I got him. Loosen the rope. Cutting my chest. Yeah, you're okay, Mike. It's a close call. Yeah. Hey, let me see that cut. How is he? He's got a bad cut on his head. How does he feel? How do you feel, Mike? I'm scared. Weak. He's weak. Better send him back down. Right. I'll lower the rattling rope. You let him down 50 feet. He's over the hard part. You make it alone from there. Right. I'm sorry, Mike. Nothing but foolishness anyway. Why? What do you mean? He's dead. Everyone knows it. Oh, I see. Why should I risk my neck coming up this mountain? No reason. If you find anything, let me know. I will. Wish I knew for sure he was dead. Yeah, I guess you do. We lowered 
Mike back down the cliff till he could go on by himself, then I worked my way up to the others. Once over the bulge, the rest was easy, and we made the second terrace by late afternoon. During the night, a heavy wind blew up, and by morning, a first-class gale was blowing. But John and I left George and Jerry to look out for the equipment, and we went on up the terrace. If the ledge went all the way to the top, we could give it a try, wind or no wind. But if the ledge ran out, and we had more scaling to do, we'd have to wait for a break in the weather. Too bad if we have to wait. Yeah. Only have supplies for five days. I know. Be cutting it pretty fine. Well, maybe the terrace goes all the way. Maybe. It's funny we haven't seen any sign. Of what? Dad's party. What did you expect? Oh, I don't know. John, what's that? What? That pile of stones looks like a cairn. Wait a minute, Larry. I gotta see. It may be Dad's. Take it easy. It is, John. It is. Are you sure? There's a tin can in here. Let's see. All right, wait till I get it open. Anything in it? Yeah, it's a piece of paper. What's it say? Wait a minute. It says... It says Lawrence Marshall, July 28th, 1938. It's got signatures of all the others. Let me see. You're right. Well, now we know they got this far. Yes, we do. You don't seem surprised. I've known all along. How? Those pythons I was hammering in coming up the cliff, they weren't my own. They were already there. I just wanted to be sure they were tight. Dad's? Yes. Why didn't you tell me? I don't know. I don't get this, John. This whole thing is mixed up. Why? All these people wanted to come with us. They all had their reasons. Well? Some of the things they've said don't fit. Like what? Like Mike said his brother took $50,000 out of the bank before he left. Yes? Weishart acted like he'd been up this mountain before. I see. Weishart is the only one I really can't understand. He brushed me off when I tried to find out why he was here. I can tell you. You can? Yes. Ten years ago, George Weishart was tried for the murder of his father and acquitted. Why? Insufficient evidence. The state's star witness was his brother. And he disappeared on the Dornelberg two months before the trial. Oh. George has been partway up the mountain before. In 1939, he tried to climb it alone and failed. That fits. How? Every one of these people wanted to go with us for selfish reasons. Yes. And everyone on Dad's trip was unhappy through no fault of his own. Everyone except Dad. You never knew your dad very well, did you, Larry? Huh? I mean, really well. Well, I was away in school a lot. Dad traveled six months of the year, but I thought I knew him. Maybe I didn't. I don't think you did. You know, from the beginning, I've had the feeling you didn't want me to make this trip. I didn't. Well, why? I can't explain. You think Dad and the other... I don't think anything. I won't forget that, John. And somehow I'm going to prove you wrong. We went on up the terrace until it started to narrow and we knew we were going to have to scale for the top. Then we went back to the tents and spent the day working on the equipment. The wind blew all day and late into the second night. But when John woke me at four the next morning, the gale had died down. Jerry had burned his hand badly on the Primus stove, and John decided that he couldn't make the try for the top with us. We started scaling the cliff right where we'd found Dad's cairn, me leading, Weishart next, and John on the end of the rope. And John had been right. Every time I reached a tough passage and needed a python, I'd find one waiting just within arm's length. By noon, we were resting on a ledge just short of the top. The bald dome of the Dernelberg stretched 200 feet above us without even a handhold in sight. Nothing but smooth, shining rock. The ledge on which we were standing circled off to our left, and we decided to skirt the dome until we found something scalable. We worked our way around for 50 feet when the ledge suddenly narrowed to three or four inches. But we could see that after a passage of 20 feet or so, it broadened out again. It was our only chance for the top, so we decided to take it. I tightened the rope around my chest, worked my way out on the lip. Chest and face jammed tight against the cliff, I moved along an inch at a time, trying not to think of the 7,000 feet of air under me. Inching and resting, inching and resting, until at last I felt the ledge widen under my feet, and I was over. Then it was Weishart's turn. Once you get out there, keep moving. Yeah. You sure that rope's tight? You think I'm a novice? Okay, okay, get going. Yeah. Atta boy, George. Keep going. Lean into the cliff. That's it. Legs gets narrow there. 
Don't rest yet. Keep moving. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Don't stop. Keep going, George. Rest in another three feet. Tired. I gotta rest. Don't stop. I, I gotta, gotta stop. Keep going. I'm tired. You're slipping, George. Hold forward. I can't hold on. Hang on. Ah! Hang on to your rope, Larry. Yeah. Hold oh. on. Can you pull it in? I can try. Take it easy. No, not too fast. John, the rope is slipping over Hang your shoulder. Hang on rope, George. Hang on. I can't. I'm slipping. Hang on. Ah! You okay, Larry? Yeah. I'll be right over. When something like that happens on a mountain, you just got to try and forget it. You got to push on, try not to think that it might have been you. John made it over to me. We worked our way along the ledge again. Finally, we found a cleft in the dome that looked scalable, and we started up. And like before, there were Dad's pythons waiting to give me a hand. In an hour, we were 10 feet from the top. Another foot, Larry. All right. That's it. Can you reach that python? Yeah. Yeah. Now pull yourself up to that ledge. Good. All right, it's easy from here. Okay, John, I'm up. Be right with you. Come on, I can pull you up from here. Okay. All right. All right, now kick free. That's it. Five feet. There. Thanks. Well, well, we made it. Yeah. It's beautiful up here. You can see for a mile. Yeah. The world seems pretty far away. Yes. Dad's pythons led all the way to the top. Meaning? They made it, too. Ought to be a cairn or something around here. Take a look. I don't see anything. Look some more. John. John, come here. What is it? It's the other side of the mountain. Yes. Titan's leading down. Well? They must have come up one side. Go on. And just gone down the other. Yes. You mean Dad and the others are still... Yes. You've known all along. I was supposed to make that climb with your dad. But why didn't you ever tell me? I didn't know whether or not you could keep their secret. Well, Larry... What are you going to tell the others? Well... I'm going to tell them... We found the spot where they fell. Come on, John, let's get going. The title, Ascent, the story of a man who learned to leave the past where it belongs. And if you like Larry's story, why not come back next week, friends? I'll have a man who had an unusual adventure with a milk truck, a money press, and a sinister stranger. I like to call it grade A. So until next week, this is John Steele saying, a life of adventure is yours for the asking, wherever you find it. Only don't look for it. It may find you. Well, goodbye and good hunting. Remember, next week, Mutual presents Gray Day, another story of suspense and action from the files of John Steele, adventurer. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.